Okay, going to be uh, creating a, a 3D brochure. Uh, there's a few different ways this can be done, um, depending on what program you're using. Uh, an actual, you can be using an actual 3D program like 3ds Max, but in this case, we're going to be focusing on Illustrator. You can do, also do this in uh, Photoshop. I kind of go between the two. Um, sometimes I'll do this in possibly in all you know in Illustrator and bring it into Photoshop and maybe do some airbrushing. I actually I'm I personally use a Wacom tablet for stuff like that and actually right now I'm using a Wacom. I strongly suggest and recommend picking one up. It just makes life a lot easier. Um, I won't go on preaching about why I think <laughs> why I think every designer should have a Wacom tablet. I'll save that for another video. I want to make these videos short simple and one of the ways I'm accomplishing that is by actually uh, just going to be showing you the bare bones of the techniques I'm not going on and on and on about too many things so this is all vector here this is just an example of what I'm going to be creating I am going to just go ahead and use one panel to show you this technique this is this is vector right now and we have a clipping path and because this photo is in a clipping path you're going to have these these white spaces when you go ahead and manipulate you'll see, you'll see what I mean when we're actually uh, add uh, go ahead through this tutorial there's a few there's another extra step as well um, so and that first step is actually let's go ahead and get started is object rasterize and you know, here's your settings if you want. Depends on your resolution. I'm going to use CMYK today. Should be set to RGB, but that's fine. This is just a demonstration. And you don't want this to be set to white background. Just make sure that's set to transparent because these, because this is set, this image is set in a clipping path, it's going to cause problems. You're going to actually have a white um, uh, shape there. So, Go ahead and click OK with these approximate settings, and now it's rasterized. Make a shape in the size of the panel you want, and go ahead and make sure you select the vector object has to be on top of the raster. Make sure you select them both at the same time, and the next step is object envelope distort and make with top object so you see a little change but the actual real magic is with the points and you can actually just select points and start manipulating your object another thing you could do is actually add points and you do that by going to the pen tool add anchor point and you can See, you can do all kinds of cool things. So I have, I have assembled these other panels, and when you're doing, when you're doing this, you start assembling. Make sure you have some kind of reference. Maybe draw some sketches or um, fold some paper to see how a paper folds. You don't want to just start um, doing stuff like this without planning it. Uh, I've done it. I'm guilty of it. So there's stuff in my portfolio that I've just started. I just went ahead and, you know, <laughs> eyeballed it. But I don't recommend that. Really, you, you can tell the difference. Um, okay, so you get the point here with that. The next thing I like to do is... This is a cool trick that you might not have known. You need the transparency palette. And if you don't see the whole thing expanded just make sure you double click on that click on this gray area make sure you're selecting the object that you want to edit well let me back up for a minute I actually have to duplicate this first and manipulate that and put it in this place so let me go back here now and I'll just fix that in a minute so you double click on here and it disappears. Create a shape. And so you're this is masking, by the way. You're just masking this. Uh, oh, 
and make sure you create a gradient, select your gradient in the swatches palette, or however you do it, however you want to do it. And so basically, the dark part of the gradient, the black part of the gradient, is making uh, the other part disappear and fade away. And this is another important step. Make sure you double click back on that to get out of that, because you you basically be still isolated in there and be wondering what's going on. I've done it a few times and it's confusing so make sure you do that so that just kinda creates a cool cool background reflection and I'll just show you that actually that is transparent fully transparent and so I'm just gonna just make it look decent and then just finish off this video if you have any questions, go ahead and email me. It's uh, design at lyletrush.com. Uh, D E S I G N at lyle, L Y L E, trush, T R U S H dot com. And I will go ahead and write you back. And so there's a, there's a couple different there's different ways of doing this in, in uh, Illustrator as well. And I can show you that. That's through uh, map art. But um, if you this this I prefer this method because you get you know so much dynamic uh, control and flexibility with the curving and everything. It's just great. It's you know I'm just piddling around here while I'm talking. It's hard to usually you know don't talk while I'm designing, but you get kind of the idea. You can actually go back into this gradient if you don't like what's going on and just manipulate that. Even just moving the object is fine. Um, actually, I'll use a gradient. I'm just getting, I'm making this video long for nothing by doing this. But basically, you end up with that. And I showed you basically everything I did to get that. The only thing, one thing I didn't show you is how I did this shadow up there. And that's basically just the same way I did the masking uh, over top of a, a black um, uh, object. And so I just created that blending effect right through. So it's, that's kind of cool. You can even just, there's other ways of doing it. And thanks a lot.